Hi, welcome. This is our uh, Bible study, reading through the Bible in a year, 2022. We are on January 18th, 2022, and we're going to be reading Genesis 37 through 38, Matthew 11, 25 through 30, Psalm 16, and Psalm 91. I want to start us off with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your perfect peace. Thank you for your provisions. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for never failing us and always being there for us no matter what. We praise you and we worship you, Lord. We come to you with open hearts and open minds. We invite the Holy Spirit in today while we read our Bible and learn more about you and more about our relationship with you, Lord. Bless this time that we have together. Help me to discern what I'm supposed to read, how I'm supposed to read. Help me with pronunciations to deliver exactly how you want me to deliver your word today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You will show me the way of life. Being with you is to be full of joy. In your right hand, there is happiness forever. Psalm 16, 11. When we stay on God's path, his road, we experience fullness in every area. And if we stick close to him, which we are called to do, we will experience joy, not just now in this life, but forevermore. Can you imagine a joy that never ends? Ooh, I can't wait. I can't wait for that. This life is just such up as ups and downs and sideways. And I can't wait for the joy to never end. Draw near to the Lord in his presence. You will find fullness of joy. After we read um, today's Bible, what are your reflections on today's Bible reading? What are your top three priorities for today? What is on your schedule to do list today? How are you doing on your water drinking? Are you drinking a lot of water? I have my water here. I'm drinking it. <clears throat> What do you want to remember from today, January 18th, 2022? I'm going to start with Genesis 37. And here we go. Joseph is sold into slavery. Can you imagine? Hmm. Joseph's dreams. Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers. The sons of Billa and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his sons because he had been born to him in his old age and he made a richly ornamented robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word of him. Joseph had a dream and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He had said, he said to them, <clears throat> <clears throat> Listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brothers said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time the sun and the moon and 11 stars were, stars were bowing down to me. 
When he told his father, as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. <clears throat> Joseph sold by his brothers. Verse 12 in chapter 37. Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flocks near Sheshem. And Israel said to Joseph, as you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Sheshem. Come, I'm going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks and bring word back to me. Then he sent him off from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Sheshem, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, what are you looking for? He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? <coughs> Excuse me. They have moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into the cistern here in the desert, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said to his res to rescue him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the richly ornamented robe he was wearing. And they took him and threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan. <coughs> Excuse me. Of Israelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh. And they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay a hand on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the cistern and saw that Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes. He went back to his brothers and said, the boy isn't there. Why, where can I turn now? Then they got Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat and dipped the robe in the blood. They took the ornamented robe back to their father and said, we found this, examine it and see whether it is your son's robe. He recognized it and said, it is my son's robe. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and mourned for his son many days. All, the, all his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, in mourning will I go down to the grave to my son, so his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. And that concludes Genesis 37. We're going to move on to Genesis 38, Judah and Tamar. At that time, Judah left his brothers and went down to stay with a man of Adalam named Hira. There Judah met the daughter of a Canaanite man named Shua. He married her and lay with her. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son who was named Ur. She conceived again and gave birth, birth to a son named and named him Onan. She gave birth to still another son and named him Shelah. It was at Kazib that she gave birth to him.
Judah got a wife from for Ur, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. But Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the Lord's sight, so the Lord put him to death. Then Judah said to Onan, Lie with your brother's wife and fulfill your duty to her as a brother-in-law to produce offspring for your brother. But Onan knew that the offspring would not be his. So whenever he lay with his brother's wife, he spilled his semen on the ground to keep from producing offspring for his brother. What he did was wicked in the Lord's sight, so he put him to death also. Judah then said to his daughter-in-law, Tamar, Live as a widow in your father's house until my son Sheila grows up. For he thought he may die too, just like his brothers. So Tamar went to live in his father's house. After a long time, Judah's wife, the daughter of Shua, died. When Judah had recovered from his grief, he went up to Timnah to the men who were Shearing his sheep and his friend Hira, the Adalamite, went with him. When Tamar was told, your father-in-law is on his way to Timna to shear his sheep, she took off her widow's clothes, covered herself with a veil to disguise herself, and then sat down at the entrance of Enam, Enam, which is on the road to Timna, for she thought, for she saw that, though Sheila had now grown up, she had not been given to him as his wife. <clears throat> Verse 15. When Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute, for she had covered her face. Not realizing that she was his daughter-in-law, he went over to her by the roadside and said, Come now, let me sleep with you. And what will you give me to sleep with you? She asked. I'll send you a young goat from my flock, he said. Will you give me something as a pledge until you send it? She asked. He said, what pledge should I give you? Your seal and its cord and the staff in your hand, she answered. So he gave them to her and slept with her. And she became pregnant by him. After she left, she took off her veil and put on her widow's clothes again. Meanwhile, Judah sent the young goat by his friend, the Adalamite, in order to get his pledge back from the woman. But he did not find her. He asked the men who lived there, where is the shrine prostitute who was beside the road at Enam? There hasn't been any shrine prostitute here, they said. So he went back to Judah and said, I didn't find her. Besides, the men who lived there said, there hasn't been any shrine prostitute here. Then Judah said, let her keep what she has or we will become a laughing stock. After all, I did send her this young goat, but you did not find her. About three months later, Judah was told, your daughter-in-law Tamar is guilty of prostitution, and as a result, she is now pregnant. Judah said, bring her out and have her burned to death. As she was being brought out, she sent a message to her father-in-law, I am pregnant by the man who owns these, she said. And she added, see if you recognize whose seal and cord and staff these are. <laughs> Old Testament. Judah recognized them and said, she is more righteous than I, since I wouldn't give her to my son, Sheila. And he did not sleep with her again. <laughs> when the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. As she was giving birth, one of them put out his hand. So the midwife took a scarlet thread and tied it around his wrist and said, this one came out first. But when he drew back his hand, his brother came out and she said, so this is how you have broken out. And he named him, and he named him Perez. Then his brother, who had the scarlet thread on his wrist, came out and he was given the name Zira. And that concludes Genesis 37 and 38. <coughs> Excuse me. to keep
keep that whistle wet so my throat doesn't get dry. Matthew 11, verse 25 through 30. <clears throat> Matthew 11, 25 through 30. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my father. No one knows the son except the father. No one knows the father except the son and though and those to whom the son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew eleven twenty five 25 through 30. <clears throat> Moving on to Psalm 16. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. As for the saints who are in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those will increase who will run after other gods. I will not pour out their libations of blood or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delighted inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasure at your hand, at your right hand. And that concludes Psalm 16. Now we're going to do Psalm 91. How we finish our everyday Bible reading. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation." Amen. Thank you for joining me today. Today we had read through the Bible, January 18th, 2022, Genesis 37 and 38, Matthew 11, 25 through 30, Psalm 16 and Psalm 91. Be a blessing and be blessed. Thank you.